Neptune is apparently a completely different colour to what we all think it is. Since the 1980s, when Voyager 2 flew past Uranus and Neptune on its trip through the solar system, this is the best image that we have of Neptune. But it is not what's known as a true colour image. The blue colour here that we've all got used to isn't what you'd see with your eyes. It is what's known as a false colour image. The colour's been enhanced to show off all the features in Neptune's atmosphere. Can you enhance it? Can we enhance this? And the fact that this was a false colour image was communicated very clearly back in 1989 when this image was released. It's just that we've all collectively forgotten. But now a new paper by Irwin and collaborators has come out this month reprocessing the image data taken by Voyager for both Uranus and Neptune so that they look like what you'd actually see with your own eye if you were that close. A true colour image. And they practically look like twins now. Like gone is Neptune's deep blue colour that we're all familiar with and in its place is a hazy pale Cerulean. It's not just blue, it's not turquoise, it's not lapis, it's actually cerulean. So what is going on here? Well in this video we're first going to chat about how Voyager actually took its images and why we end up with false and true colour images, to why the Voyager team processed them to be this false blue colour and why that information has been lost to time, and three, what this new paper has done to get at the true colour images. But first, before we dive into all of that, this might be a story that you missed if you live outside of the UK, which is where the majority of media publications that picked up on the press release of this research were located. I can see that information thanks to my Vantage subscription to Ground News, who are the sponsor of today's video. Ground News shows you all the world's media in one place, and it's the brainchild of ex-NASA engineer Harleen Kaur. So with Ground News, we can see the media coverage for this research on Neptune and Uranus. Over 40 sources have covered this story, which a majority centre-leaning publications. So if you tend to read right-wing-leaning publications, you might have missed this one. But what I think is really interesting that you can see with Ground News is how the language used by different sources reporting on a story changes across across the political spectrum. In this case, the left-leaning sources say things along the lines of, this is what Neptune really looks like. Whereas right-leaning sources, like the Daily Express for example, emphasise the word mystery around Neptune's colour. What's especially great for science news coverage is that you can see the factuality rating of each media source as well, with three news monitoring organisations assessing that bias and factuality rating so that ground news can stay objective. And of course it's not just science news that that's important for, with everything going on in the world right now, I rely on ground news to help me try and wade through like what is fact and what is opinion in the news, which is why I'm so glad to be partnering with them again. So if, like me, you want to become a more informed media consumer, then head to the link in the video description below at ground.news slash drbecky to get 30% off their Vantage plan. An offer which is only available this month in January, so make sure you don't miss out. All right, thanks again to Ground News for sponsoring this video, and now let's get back to the science. Let's start with how Voyager actually took its images. So all the images that Voyager took and that any telescope takes are in black and white. They have detectors that record where light is and isn't detected across an image. Now to me, as a professional astrophysicist, that's normal. That's how I get all of my data, that's always what it's like. But as a member of the public, the images that get released are always in colour. So where do those colours come from? Well, I've made a video before about the colour in space images if you want a bit of a deep dive on this, but essentially in Voyager's case what it did was take five separate images, each through a filter that only lets through certain colours of light. They were labelled as UV, violet, blue, green and orange. And these sort of map roughly to the colours that the cells in our eyes detect, that also kind of act like filters for blue, green and red light. So what we do is we take our black and white images from the telescope that have been taken, that only letting through blue light, colour that blue, then the green one, colour that green, red, colour that red, and then add them together to get a colour image like what you'd see with your eyes. This is the same way that a digital camera works. It splits the light into red, green and blue and records them separately before combining them. If you've ever done any photo editing before, you'll know how the image is split into red, green and blue channels. Or if you've ever picked a colour before on a computer, you know, you can make any colour by changing the amount of red, green 
and blue. It's the exact same concept for space images, but we can also play with things like stretch and contrast and colour to make certain features stand out that we would otherwise miss with our eyes that gives us some piece of scientific information. So for example, images of nebulae. We often take an image in a filter that only lets through the light given off at a specific colour by hydrogen atoms, which is reddish in colour. And that sometimes gets set solely as the red channel on that image to really kick up the contrast so you can see that feature of where the hydrogen is that otherwise would be too faint for you to see with your eyes. And a similar thing was done to the images of Neptune taken by Voyager, which is why these images are so blue. Which brings us to our second point of why they made this false, very blue colour image. Uranus really was just left as it was. It was featureless, it was very smooth looking, there's really no features to highlight in its atmosphere. But Neptune does have features in its atmosphere, clouds, bands and winds that are most noticeable in blue light. So the blue was enhanced to give us this bright blue image we're so familiar with. And so that was really well known, at least in the astrophysics community, but that distinction seems to have been lost over time. Like, yeah, okay, I wasn't born in 1989, but I'm an astrophysicist. I've been working in this field for 10 years, and I've been trying to communicate this stuff to the public online for seven of those years, where I then also try and label whether something is a true colour or a false colour image to help stop these misconceptions. And even I didn't know that this image of Neptune was a false colour image. But there were some people that remembered. Because when this new paper was released this month detailing this true colour of Neptune, there were many people online saying that they remember this happening at the press conference and they remember the research paper that was released by Smith and collaborators after the flyby where they documented that these were false colour. I actually saw this thread on Mastodon from Daniel Fischer, who's a science writer in Germany, who said that they were there at the press conference reporting on the story. And they pointed out that that side-by-side -side comparison image of the true colour versus the false colour of Neptune was shown, was explained in the press conference, but it was never distributed to the media in hard copy. This was August 1989, so the internet as we know it with like HTTP was just a, a gleam in Tim Berners-Lee's eye, right? I think the first successful communications were a few months later in November 1989. So any images that were released in the press conference had to be distributed to the media as full-on printed hard copies, which is so crazy to think of now. Plus that scientific paper describing the images by Smith and collaborators only had black and white versions of those raw images of Neptune and the only colour figures in the paper are of the enhanced image of Neptune. I thought that was a bit weird at first, but speaking to some of my senior colleagues in the department, they said that actually the journals used to charge more for every colour image that you wanted to print. So it it just seems like all of these things combined together have conspired to make us all forget that that canonical image that we have of Neptune is false colour and it's not actually that blue. Which brings us to what this new paper has done to get at these true colour images. Because you might be thinking, well, can't we just reduce the contrast back down and go back to like the original raw images from Voyager to actually get it a true colour image? Well yes, you could, but given the fact that the filters used by Voyager to let in those certain wavelengths of light don't directly map to what the eye would necessarily see, then that image still isn't a true colour image of what you'd see with your eyes. What you need to do to do this properly is get a really detailed spectrum of Neptune. A spectrum is made by taking light and passing it through a prism to split it into all of its different colours or wavelengths and what you get is a trace of how much light at each colour it gives off. You can't just take all the light from the planet though and split it to get one spectrum because the thing is the colour of Neptune changes across the face of the planet. It has those clouds and different features. So what you need is many spectra, one in each pixel of the image to do this 
properly. We now have the tech to do this on the very large telescope in Chile with the instrument MUSE. It's what's known as an integral field unit and it's useful across so many different areas of astrophysics, especially what I do with galaxies. I have been applying to use Muse on the VLT now for four years for my research and every application I've put in has been rejected because it is so heavily oversubscribed. 13 times more nights are applied for with every application season than are actually available for you to use. And so every time I see a paper like this, it's like, oh, we used Muse. I'm like, oh, I see. This is who you decided to give time to over my research on black holes. Like, Fine, I guess this is interesting. <laughs> anyway, with Muse, we get that trace of how much light each wavelength we have, albeit a little bit more pixelated than the Voyager images, which were obviously taken much closer to Neptune than Chile is. Which is the understatement of the year. But we can map each of the pixels in the Voyager images back to one of the spectrum pixels in the Muse data, and we can go from there trying to map the colors back from what Voyager saw into what we'd actually see with our eyes in a true color. And if you do that for both Uranus and Neptune, you find that Neptune is actually a very similar colour to Uranus. You can still just about see the features in its atmosphere of those clouds and bands, but they're not as obvious anymore. And I think looking at these, you can almost see why the Voyager team played with the contrast a bit to show those features and differences more, which inadvertently sort of gave each of these planets their own identities, which have then stuck in our collective subconscious and has led to us forgetting that this is a false colour image. The wonderful thing about this, though, is that this is not what Irwin and collaborators were trying to do. This was almost like a footnote to their main research that they were focused on. What they really wanted to do was figure out why the colour of Uranus changed over time, with its seasons as it orbits the Sun every 84 Earth years. Because Uranus orbits on its side at a 98 degree angle to the plane of the solar system. So it sort of rolls around the sun and it leaves these extreme seasons that last like you know, 20 years where one side of the planet is in complete darkness. It also means we only ever see one side of the planet for 20 years at a time. So we have to wait a very long time before we can see any of these seasonal changes. It's always been a bit of a mystery because there's never been a comprehensive study of this until now. Erwin and collaborators took observations from the Lowell Observatory taken from 1950 to 2016 to see how the colour changed. But for that, they first needed to work out the true colour of Uranus and reprocess both the Voyager and the Hubble Space Telescope images that have been taken in the past 30 years using the MUSE data. What they ended up finding was that Uranus appears a little greener at its solstices, so during summer and winter, when one of the planet's poles is pointed towards the Sun. But during Uranus's equinoxes, when the Sun is actually directly over the equator there, then Uranus has more of a blue tinge, and Erwin and collaborators worked out that this is because of different concentrations of methane across Uranus. So methane is a gas that absorbs more red light and reflects more blue light. So there's more methane at the equator than at the poles. They worked out there's actually half the amount of methane at the poles than there is at the equator. But I just love the idea of thinking about them like, you know, reprocessing all these images of Uranus, you know, to do their science. And, you know, maybe one of them just had this thought where they were like, should we do Neptune while we're here and see what we find? And they just didn't realize the absolute can of worms that they would open. Maybe one of them had the thought on the team that was just like, should we do Neptune while we're, sorry, <laughs> my northernness is showing that I don't know why. The person on the team's like, should we do Neptune? <laughs> yeah, all right, lads, should we do Neptune while we're here? <laughs> like, half the comments, it's just going to be people from outside of the UK, like, what did she just say? <laughs> the Venn diagram of astrophysicists who care about Neptune's colour and people who can recite the Meryl Streep <laughs> thing from Devil West Prada, there's just, just me in the middle. <laughs> and every time I see this, I'm just like, oh, okay, so this is who you decided to give time to over my research on black holes, eh? No. Fine. I mean, it's not fine, but I'll get over it with yet another serving proposal. If anyone from ESO is watching this, can you please let us know the decisions? Because I am just, every day I'm checking it, like, have I got time on Muse? Have I got time on Muse? 